We are in beautiful Seba today. So you always have to complement food with something, right? Either wine the or... Look at this. One of the things they warn you about, about grabbing moorings here, is if there's any kind of swell, your boat rocks around quite a bit and can sometimes chafe through the line. So since we might not be on our boat for a day or two, we kind of hurricane-proofed our mooring by adding a whole bunch more chafe gear to it and doubling it up. Knowing Uma wasn't going anywhere, we rode to shore with Doi and checked out the boat that had recently grounded. So this is an example of what happens when the seas aren't right in this bay. <laughs> That's insane, man. Insane. Turns out, a bad storm caused the line to chafe. The ship broke free from its mooring and drifted to shore. After gazing at the wreck, we secured Dory under a cave and we were ready to take the scenic route into Seba. For the past couple hundred years since this whole um, island was colonized, these steps have been the only way in and out of the island. And um, as defense, the colonists used to put uh, a bunch of boulders up on the hill and held it back with uh, like timbers. And then when people would come and try to invade this beach behind me, they would just release the timbers and all the boulders would come crashing down on them. Since this was the only way to get on the island. <laughs> Kika's trying to wash the sand off of her feet. All right, let's do this thing. I'm not sure if many people do this. I think most people um, take their dinghies and go around the corner and check in at, at uh, Fort Bay. But we're taking, the, we're taking the long ways to check in. We're taking the exciting way. I think there are 800 steps up and then a pathway to the town. So we're going to start counting 800 steps. So far we have one, two, three, four, five. I'm at five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Kika's still counting. Four. We'll see if we get to the top. It's really pretty so far though. It's absolutely beautiful. It's nice and cool. Mm -hmm. It's been raining, so it's nice and moist. So far so good. We are at 352 steps. Some steps are steeper than others. Some steps are longer than others. But I'm pretty sure it's going to be worth it when we get to the top. We're at four nine, four, 492. 400 um, officially and, halfway there. Wait, 402. 400. <laughs> That's not it, is it? 431. 432. We're supposed to be halfway now. Aww. 460 steps. And, and then you get a road. All books and articles say 800 steps from Ladder Bay to the bottom. But although they were misleading, part of me was a bit relieved. There is one main road in Seba, known as The Road. We continue through the bottom, which is the town on top of Ladder Bay. I know, the names here are very confusing. We pass the picturesque red roof houses, the goats running up and down the streets, and a giant tractor. Good. Well, that's a runway road, and sometimes I guess we have to make way for the bacos to track through. That was a really tight fit. <laughs> As we slowly started our descent to Fort Bay, someone stopped to offer us a ride down. 
slow on the back. <laughs> so we just need to go check in. I'm not sure if you know where the customs office is. There, customs office, or yeah, I, yeah, I could have got gas. So. All right, is that the only gas station? Yeah. Just finished a ride down the hill with this lovely lady in this tiny car back here named Chris. Chris. <laughs> Super friendly. She told us everything there is to know she about this called, island. She called a friend of hers that had that happened to have a, a room, a little bed breakfast. So we're going to sleep have, on a bed sleep tonight. On a bed That's not moving. Tonight. <laughs> yeah. um, but now we gotta <laughs> get our be so much fun. We gotta awesome. get our passport stamped now and then um, grab a drink and some food before heading back up the hill. Checking in here is really easy. But getting a ride from one place to the other is even easier. People here are known for their generosity and kindness. Everyone is always devoted to help and just about everyone will offer you a lift. We got a ride! On the back of a truck. On the back of a truck. It's the best way to get a ride. It's crazy to think that until the 1930s, Sabin transported everything themselves, or with donkeys, to the island's crazy stairs and trails. When the project to build a road was presented, civil engineers called it impossible because of the island's extreme topography. But 25 years later, the road that could not be built was fully completed. And the best part, it was all built by hand without the use of any machinery. You're driving so fast. Yeah, this so was I, the most I epic felt like I was ride. Fall out of that he, truck like every time. His side view mirror was touching like yeah. the plants at the, on the right, like really scraping oh, the crazy. edges. That was it crazy. was it was a little sketchy, but I'm glad we're here. We're alive and we made it. Let's keep right exploring the streets of Saba, looking for El Momo Queso. And everyone we ask seems to send us a different direction. <laughs> That's the fun part. It's like literally everywhere we ask, someone gives us different directions to get there. So until one of them is right, we're just going to keep wandering around. I'm going to take this road. Okay. Just go straight down. Two roads. <laughs> and down this road on the left. Um, they go on the floor and stuff on this side. Back up this hill and then you go to your right. So you keep following yeah. the road all yeah. the way up. Luckily, we got another ride with someone who knew exactly where we needed to go and dropped us off right in front of El Momo. Thank you! Hello Kika, I'm Stefan. Stefan, I'm from Guinness. Bye, welcome. Bye, donkey! Alright, so we just made it to our beautiful little bed and breakfast, and this is our beautiful little room here. It's called the Turtle Cottage. Um, it's really, really cute, and you can't beat the view. Check this out. You can see all the way down to the ocean from here. Saber has been so amazing. So I really pretty. love this little island. I mean, I haven't been to all the Caribbean islands, but sailing into it, there's beautiful landscapes and just the, the beach. And, and we the got on people this. are so friendly. Everyone people are so amazing. Friendly. So our boat's moored over here, and we took the dinghy to the ladder. We hiked up the ladder yesterday, got a ride down and checked in, and then we got a ride all the way over here to Windward Side, and we're right now in a little bed and breakfast up here on Booby Hill. So, um,. We were planning on going up this mountain today, but it looks like it's still in a cloud yeah. and we'll probably be in a cloud all day. So we're gonna go on a shorter hike. I think we're gonna go try to find the sulfur mine today. Mm -hmm. That yeah. sounds like fun. Yeah. I feel like that's gonna be a good idea. Okay, should we go hiking? We now. should go yeah. hiking. Let's get all it right. to let's, let's go. go. Peace. After stopping for a nice breakfast at the Busy Bee, 
we got a ride to the mine trail. The best part is, we met Trisha, the driver of this tiny little red car, the night before. And when she heard that we were looking for a place to stay, she offered us to spend the night in one of her rental apartments. I'm telling you people, Seba is magic. Thanks. Bye. <laughs> awesome. So Trisha just dropped us off at the beginning of the trail, and it should be a quick walk to the sulfur mine. A couple of years ago, like, like, they found here. a dead body inside um, the cave. The rumor says that he got lost, his flashlight died, and he just hunkered down in a little section, and he died there. The two people that actually found him had almost the same problem because their flashlight went out, and they only had a little LED light in their keychain, and they were able to find their way out. But, finding, but on their way out, they found him. On the way out, they found a dead body. So let's do this. Sulfur mine, a bit of history. In 1887, the Mignish Sulfing Mining Company began to work here, employing over a hundred sabins. However, the island's steep terrains proved to be a difficult obstacle. Lacking an anchorage along the island's shoreline, the miners were forced to transport the sulfur along the cableway a hundred meters above the sea to Green Island. Due to rough seas and a ring of coral reefs surrounding the island, ship had difficulty loading the sulfur. The mining venture ended within a year. Hmm. It was later restarted by the Seba Sulfur Company in 1905. But this was another short-lived effort. Remains of the old sulfur mines still exist today. Do you think they took it out with dynamite or something? No, just hand picked. Hand picked. Hand -picked. This rock is really easy. Imagine having to work down here. And this this all Look day. at this. Look up here, Kika. Look, they have like little little stone things carved in. They can climb up into that tunnel and keep mining sulfur. Yeah. Yeah, hunched over on your back, crawling through with little carts, pushing rocks and shit out of here. Hot. Such a crap job. It's so hot. Yeah. But this is so cool. Yeah, this is like really it's cool. pitch black in front and behind us. But this is the stuff they warn you not to do that you do. Yeah. <laughs> we're not gonna get lost because right around the corner we can actually see the light of the oh, exit. Don't tell them that. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've ventured enough. Get out of here. Let's um, go get naked. Let's outside. go. Let's go back outside <laughs> in the fresh air. <laughs> All right. Um, Dan. Oh. <laughs> that's what scary. happened? Ooh. That's scary. That well, I like scary. the red light actually. That's cool. That is really cool. Alright, let's see if we can get out of here. Oh, do you Rock want to Roxanne! Well, I don't even you know. don't have to cut a red light! So there's safe and unsafe ways to explore mines and caves and stuff like that. We only poked our heads in a few hundred feet and we could still see the entrance. That's a pretty safe way to do it. You lose your light, you can still make your way back out. Um, there's a lot of different tunnels and a lot of different access points in there. And if you're serious about exploring it, make sure you bring lots of water, lots of flashlights, back up to your backup flashlights, and um, tie a piece of string and go in with a piece of string so that if you lose your light, you can find your way back out again. Um, this is a pretty confusing sulfur mine. It goes up and down and left and right and small little corridors and big corridors. But I've explored a, quite a few caves. I've rock climbed and, and gone spelunking through quite a few caves. 
and you always bring a string and you always bring more flashlights than you think you can possibly need and water and food because if you get stuck down there you can survive for a couple days but so far I've only had good experiences with caves what I want to say is if you're going to caves I'm not experienced bring a lot of girls keep yourself busy in there you'll be fine for two days <laughs> It's only 10 minutes down. They don't tell you about the hike on the way back up. I feel like it's not the same path. No. Somebody just came and made it longer and harder. And now it's time for. Now I think it's time to jump in the pool. Yeah. Let's go. Really like so, Stefan's last night in Sabo, we're going to make it count. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we have to make we it We have to make it count. We're going out onto the front porch. We really enjoyed having Stefan around for the past couple of days. As you can tell, he is a real character, always making us smile. We enjoyed our last drinks and sunset together, and the next morning, we said goodbye to our dear friend, as he took off from Seba's 400 meter short runway which is actually the shortest commercial runway in the world. Thanks again for watching this step and come back next week when we hike the second half of the island and have to get rescued trying to row back to our boat before we sail off to Eustatia. Hey guys! Hello guys! It's us from the future. Us from the future. <laughs> <laughs> little quick update. We uh, we probably don't say this enough, but we wanted to take a second to thank all of you. Yes, thank you, thank you, thank you to everyone who's been watching those videos, everyone who's been liking our videos. You have no idea how much it's been helping us. And keep us motivated comments. and keep yes. us moving and keep us looking for more adventures to go on. <laughs> and a special thank you to all of our Patreon. Oh, we just reached our 1K goal yes, on Patreon. Which is awesome! Which is so amazing <laughs> and we cannot thank you enough. You're the one who's making sharing these videos possible for sure yes and we are so excited to meet so many more goals with you yes but yeah we're about to boost everything up and we're so excited so again thank you guys so much it means the world to us that you're out there and um until next week cheers cheers guys you see that line where the sky meets the sea it calls me and no one knows how far it goes. <laughs> High five. Yeah. Got it, success.